Don't be afraid of salt. Sodium is probably not going to hurt you. Look, in the extreme cases, yeah, you got to be careful. And unless your doctor tells you this is something you need to look at, unless you have a specific reason, stop fearing sodium. It's fine. Not only is it fine, but for those of you that work out, and especially those of you that work out and eat a whole food-based diet, you're probably going to want to even add sodium to your diet for improved athletic performance, better pumps, and yes, better health. Embrace the flavor. Okay. Do you so, think this has reached the masses? It, well, no. You know, you, know why, you know why I did this one? Why? There's a study that's circulating right now. Okay. Everybody's freaking out over it. I'll oh, God. This, yeah, I'm going to pull up the study. Oh, oh, more, what do they call this, disinformation or misinformation? Well, I don't know the difference between the two. Here's the problem. Here's one of the big problems what with studies. What is the difference? Yeah. Huh? Miss or dis? Yeah, what is the difference between those? A woman says one, the other one a guy says. Stupid. I don't know. That's not what it is. I don't misinformation know. or disinformation? Misinformation is no. wrong. Disinformation is what I'm purposely trying to make. Like deceive you? you? Maybe. Is that what it is? Like Doug, look at misinformation versus dis. Uh, Am I right? So misinformation, I just I, I quote time, something wrong. Justin. I don't know any better. But disinformation, <laughs> I know better. But I'm I'm, I'm trying, trying to mess with, you. mess you up. Oh, I'm not wow. the one who were doubting you, dude. Yeah, I know. Right? Thanks. He just yeah, announced. He's geez. been here how many episodes now? I mean, All right. So look, this is the study. Are you fucking team him today? That everybody. <laughs> <laughs> fucking I was waiting for that. What are you, fuck, what are you hey, guys doing afterwards? You, I don't know about. He's Jesus, in a bad mood, dude, Justin. All day no, today. He's don't been, push him too. Yeah, team yeah, you're right. That was a bad idea. Uh, he's gonna I noticed he was awfully quiet. He's going to scream at you. the bear. Stop. Nobody knows what we're talking about. We're going to fight earlier, okay, everybody? All right, look. uncomfortable now. So everybody's sharing the study because the study showed that every single person in the study who cut their sodium had a improvement, not a huge improvement, but had an, impro an improvement in blood pressure. Okay. Right away. I have a question. Yes. So did they control where the sodium came from or is it just like, Hey, let's just measure people's sodium when they reduce their sodium. Do they get better? Okay. So I'll get into the study. But before I get into that, because you're close and that's what I thought too. I'm like, okay, this is weird. Hmm. Um, so first off, is lower blood pressure necessarily always better? There's arguments that could say that not necessarily depend. If you're in a healthy range, in fact, sometimes you can go too low. I know my wife has this where she suffers from migraines uh, mm -hmm. from it. And if she gets up too fast from being on the floor or something like that, she can get dizzy. My mom has this. Yeah. Yeah. yeah she'll pass out sometimes. Right. So, so lower isn't always better. Number one. Now in this case, none of them got to that crazy place, but I just want to say that number two, there's other studies that show that in the context of a healthy diet, active, the higher sodium intakes were healthier um, and people had better longevity. So those are previous studies. Nonetheless, I'm going to read to you a part of the study that I copied and pasted because here's where it gets interesting. Okay. So, and you won't see this unless you go to the actual study and read it because I read the like the kind of breakdown on Science Daily. And even that doesn't tell you everything, right? And that's better than a news article. What do the news articles say? Yeah. Sodium is bad for you. Cut it. It makes you healthier. Right, right. Okay. Science Daily not, doesn't say that, but it also, it doesn't give you the details. So I had to actually go to the actual study. With the abstract. To read the actual, not even the abstract. The abstract is not even going to tell you. You have to really break down oh, and go wow. in. Yeah. So here's what it said. The high sodium, so they, 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 took, they took groups of people, obviously. The high sodium diet was achieved pragmatically by daily supplementation of each participant's usual diet with an additional two bouillon packets, each containing 1,100 milligrams of sodium. So what they did is they took people and they said, don't change anything. We're just going to add We're going to add bouillon. We're going to add these two packets of, uh, of sodium. Oh, well, okay? there's the well, it gets better. So let's see what the other group did, right? The low-sodium diet, this is where I'm like, how are people even taking this seriously? The low-sodium diet was... Standardized the cross sites and prepared in metabolic kitchens at the University of Illinois, Chicago. Okay. One week of low sodium meals, snacks, and beverages were provided at no cost to participants with instructions not to consume anything outside that was provided. Okay. <laughs> What? 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 You changed their diet. Yeah. Yes. You didn't That's just change did. their sodium. <laughs> the whole diet. You changed their diet. Yes. Uh, so at the very least, the study means and, and nothing. And not to mention yeah. that you take the average person who's eating. They are, and we've talked about this before, most people don't need to add sodium because most people eat highly processed foods. Which is always high. So yes. if you take most people that are already consuming the upper end of sodium and they're also getting a lot of other stuff they probably don't need and eating in a surplus because that's what the normal American diet is, 
highly <clears> processed <throat> foods, and then you slap on an extra 1,100, 1100 milligrams 100, of sodium 100. on that person, of course they're going to not do as well as the group that you controlled their diet and made in a kitchen good lower sodium I would, food. I would like to see them... <laughs> Do the same, the sodium the same, but now you guys eat the diet that they prefer, prepared for you. You guys eat whatever you want. Like this at the very least means nothing because the, and first, by the way, it, they didn't show any other improvements or changes in health markers necessarily, maybe some in the low sodium group. And that tells me right there that they changed that. Like, what did they prepare for them? I'm yeah. pretty sure they didn't prepare for them a diet that was identical to the diets that they had on their own at home. So it's terrible controls. No it's compl it's totally terrible controls. See, and then and the apples and oranges. Yes, and then to what you're saying, Adam, like the studies that show that high sodium is bad for you, they 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 don't control for the fact that people get their sodium from shitty food. Yeah. This is not people eating whole natural foods who are also having a lot of sodium. I nev never have any of us had a client, you come in, you assess their diet, and they're eating fast food every day, once to three times a day every day, and we go, hey, keep everything the same. But I want to bump your sodium because yeah. I heard more. <laughs> You're fine. <laughs> Nobody. Yeah. The only people we end up doing for is when you, you get that person who used to eat like that, you've now got them to eat all whole foods. Right. Like eliminate all the processed foods. And they're bought into that. And they're seeing great results in the gym. But then you realize like, oh shit, I took them from a ton of sodium that they were getting in processed foods. Super low. Zero. Just super yeah, low. Totally even easy. if they're kind of lightly salted, even salting their food pretty well, they're, got, they're getting nowhere near. And so that person, I'm going, we yeah. need to supplement. With sodium, yeah, you need to get yeah. that more. And you'll get better performance, and better they will. pumps. Yeah, because you need a balance. You don't yeah. need to be like super low. <laughs> like you need the electrolyte balance. No, no, it's that's crazy to me. That so the people were circulating. I'm like, don't you read like what's going on no, here? That's a terrible. Does. People, no one reads past the headline, bro. No, I, I mean, what I would like to see is two healthy diets, whole natural food based, controlled, higher sodium, lower sodium, and then cross over and see. What happens to them, and see what's what's what you know, and, and look at all things. Don't I would just look at a few points on the you know blood pressure, but look at other markers. Look at performance. Look at perce you know perception. Do you feel better? Cognition, mm -hmm. like all those different. I things. would love to see this. Maybe maybe Element could get to a place where they actually run something like this, where you have two people that they have a, a groups where they're same maintenance calories, twenty five hundred calories. They both eat whole foods. One of them they lightly salt their food and then one of them lightly salts and adds two packets of, of element. element per day and see what happens yeah. to their performance their health markers and everything and i bet you the one that adds the salt in addition to all the feels salty better. it feels better yeah element t by the way is one of our most repurchased brands there the our our listeners will go over there buy a product and then keep going back yeah. okay that's because people are noticing like good effects. I mean, I notice great effects from it. Am great I, performance boost yeah. if it's if it's something that you know you're devoid of. Yeah, but uh, let me tell you. Let me, yeah. Like, I'll give you an example. If you took the average American's diet and said nothing else, all you said to them was, <clears throat> "You got to eat less than a thousand milligrams of salt a day," and then they actually go and try and do this, right? And they look at all the foods that they normally eat. You know what's going to happen? They would eliminate a bunch of They're going to ch completely change their yes. diet. Yes. It's not the same not food. Crave it anymore? No. Go to the grocery store right now. Go through all the processed yeah. foods. Pick out the stuff that's low sodium, and you'll have one tenth of the problem. And by the way, yeah. by the way, okay, that's not a awful strategy to help somebody get healthier initially to get them to cut out processed foods. Sure. Like it's like a trainer hack or trick, right? right. I'm not telling mm -hmm. my client they can't have anything. I'm just going to give them these parameters, yeah. and then you know, as a coach and trainer, that they would potentially. So I get that. That's kind of like what we talk about with adding protein, yeah, in the diet, yeah, yeah. right? I don't tell my client they can't have McDonald's, they can't have this, but if I tell them they have to hit their protein intake, I know what inevitably is going to happen. Right. They're going to end up getting rid of some of that processed food. So from that perspective, it's it's understandable. But you also have to finish educating around that, like what we just did. It's not like I tell my client, just add protein, and then I don't tell them what we did. Mm -hmm. You know, like, you know, what I did to you by having you do that is we've eliminated yeah. these foods and that's why, like. Yeah, heavily processed foods are like 80% of the problem uh, when it comes to the, the the dietary issues that we're struggling with. And, and the main reason is they're irresistible. Yeah. That you overeat with them. And if you look at the studies on sugar, you know, certain kinds of fats that people would say are bad for you, whatever. When your calories are low, you erase a lot of those negative issues. In fact, there's professors and scientists who I personally think are morons, but they like to prove that point. What do they do? 
a, a, a professor will be like, I'm going to lose 30 pounds on a McDonald's only diet. And I'm going to show you improvements in all my blood markers. And he does. Now why? He's eating 1200 calories, right? He's eating yeah. a cheeseburger. And a, right. So yeah, calorie so, control. Yeah. Yeah. So my point with that is these foods make you overeat. And that's where a lot of the problems come from. So just avoiding those foods alone makes it like a million times easier. Today's program giveaway is MAPS Aesthetic. Here's how you can win. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win, we're going to let you know in the comment section. We also have a sale going on. Ready for this? Cyber Monday. 60% off everything. All programs. All bundles. Everything. If you're interested, click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, here comes the show. Who's uh, who's got the notes on the processed foods versus Ozempic? I got it. That, mm -hmm. What's that on? Oh, yeah. I'll pull it up just now. Oh, right, I was actually going to go there. They were getting mad, right? Because it, it was like uh, their profit margins are starting to see it's eating into it, right? When people aren't like snacking as much and like going for these like processed food products. Yeah, well, Sal how, predicted that like a, about a month ago. I did. Yeah, yeah, you came out and he said, oh, watch what happens if we start to... So uh, that's why I'm asking yeah, you. So this is like a, 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 something new uh, this, in that This regard? is how powerful the peptide uh, semaglutide is, the brand name Ozempic, right? It's so <clears throat> effective in, in terms of like making people eat less. That these companies are taking notice. So Nestle, Nestle is a huge company, right? They own lots of different products and foods and stuff. And this is Forbes. Uh, Nestle is developing products to accompany drugs like Ozempic. Amid fears, they will eat into sales. So they're actually interesting. Here's mm. their strategy. Mm. This is interesting. Nestle CEO can't Mark beat them, join them. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great. That's great. You gotta, that's give right. them you gotta give them credit. What are you gonna do? Yeah, you gotta figure it out. Hey, that's pretty. Uh, listen, listen to what it I says. I didn't it. predict that coming. Did oh, you? Bro, no. I look at. Listen to what it says. <laughs> Nestle wow. CEO Mark Schneider said in an earnings briefing that the company is working on a number of health aids targeted towards the growing number of people using drugs Smart. like. Ozempic and Wegovy. Smart. Who's the CEO? Who is it? Uh, Mark Schneider. Give that guy some credit. Yeah, dude. dude. If Schneider. that was his call, that was that's. Brilliant. And here, and here, check this out. This is so. Now, this is so brilliant. Okay, with people eating less, and this is what I would do if I was the CEO of this company, which I wouldn't be because it's you know shit food or whatever. But let's say I was right. This is what I would do. I would look at this and go, okay, how can we? change directions or move so that we don't get crushed. Bro, let's put, he, let's this, put small packaged foods for less calories and do things like no, that. No, he's even smarter than okay, that. Okay, let me this hear what he did. With people eating less, he, this is actually brilliant. This guy deserves an award. Schneider said there's an opening for products like supplements to support weight loss and ensure people get the vitamins, minerals, and other nutrients they need but may no longer be getting from food, All including, so this here's some examples. Some companion products could also help Limit the loss of lean muscle mass. Oh, wow. And ensure lost weight is not regained. Wow. So they're literally going to attach themselves yeah, yeah. to this. Smart. And the fact that people lose muscle because- Did you, I did not see that coming. Brilliant. I did not see that coming. I mean, so if the <laughs> listeners that didn't hear you say That's this, why CEOs the get prediction paid prediction so that the thing yeah. that you said, which I agreed 100% with, is that here, this is like new, big pharma- versus big a uh, big food right yeah, yeah. like that's uh, those are two behemoths it's in king kong and Godzilla. yes and <laughs> yeah. so and this is this whole thing is going to oppose each other and so when normally they're on the same page right mm. you keep getting fatter and sicker we'll give them the medicine yeah. on the back end you keep getting fat yeah. and so this is the first time they conflict Right. And so we thought what we were going to see was a bunch of propaganda on both sides of, oh, this is awful for you. Oh, yeah, this is yeah. great for you. Oh, and, and you'd see that. But instead, you see them kind of joining forces. Yeah, well, Pro interesting. Yeah. What big food would want from big pharma would be a pill that made you lose weight, weight and you ate a whole bunch of food yeah, on top yeah, of yeah, it. Then they'd be, love it. Yeah, yeah. Fuck yeah. Keep eating. <laughs> you you eat whatever, whatever you want now. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's also what consumers will want, right? But this one makes you eat less. So they're like, oh shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's, that's I know. I'm impressed. I know. Hmm. I wonder I wonder how it's going to work out, right? I, I I can see the angle now, right? Because uh, some of glutide, I mean, it kills your appetite. You eat less. If you don't keep your protein high and you don't strength train, like any diet, you cut your calories, you're going to lose you muscle. Lose Which, weight. by the way, this is the best argument against it. That's right. Yeah, the that's best right. argument that I've heard from the fitness space that like is not pro is like, listen, people are taking this yeah. and they're finding that they're losing as much. Of course. Which is, yes, absolutely. That's what happens with any diet. Yeah, and you take it, you it, take someone and you put a thousand calorie diet, there's, they're going to lose muscle that's right. too. Right, and any of the side effects that have been substantial, like the muscle or the uh, gut paralysis is just oh. because of like overdose. 
dose, super high dose, part, right? Yeah. yeah, like they yeah. they really overdo it, and that doesn't get it. The the alarming part of that, like that, doesn't make it in the conversation. No, there's millions and millions of people using these, and who knows, right? What what potential long term, whatever. It's probably okay. There's going to be risks. For yeah, sure. always. Yeah, it's yeah, always always. But it's probably okay. But yeah, it's uh, interesting. It's really interesting yeah. because yeah. that's the direction I would go. Right? I so, would go that because I'm like, oh, well, we got to keep your muscle. Here's some cool yeah, muscle. I mean, you know, we, we put a creatine in our so now what will be spearheading. Yeah. yeah. So now what will be even more interesting is it, do other companies follow suit with Nestle mm. or does is, does Nestle do, separate themselves from being the first ones to be like you know what let's instead of Campino we were going to join them uh, and then the other food companies and big, big well isn't it I, Jackie just sent me this this infographic it was like ten companies that own like food companies that own like all the f- major food yeah oh, Nestle's one of them ten yeah Nestle's, yeah, yeah, Nestle's so it's one. like of course. I mean, I would assume that they're all kind of like connected and talking to each other. Or there's a the handful are somewhat competitive. That's what I mean. Like maybe mm. Nestle decides this is the route we're going to go. Mm-hmm. And then maybe somebody else does the other direction, which is the propaganda. But you know what this tells me on the outside? On the outside, if these companies are looking to pivot, because that's cost them a lot of money to do that. That means like, they see big, it. They see it already. That means yeah. that it's having an impact. Already. Mm-hmm. This is a first time. What, do, markets right now are really... Interesting. Okay, you were talking about a reverse market crash. All that does is sounds like economic growth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if it's really a reverse. If it's the reverse, then what's that's, the, so the reason why it's called this must a, be a negative thing. It yeah. is. That's okay. why it's a, considered a reverse market crash. Is be, and, and it's similar to like what hyperinflation would kind of look like. Oh. And that was what's happening is in what they produce. So we saw like if the if you were to look at today right now versus last year, homes, cars, things like that, other assets you would see there there has been a, a dip, but it was so, so high that right. even the dip is still putting us in our, But it is now starting to level out and even climb in some areas, oh, no. even with bad interest rates. And then you also have that we're still not enough homes. And what the Fed has came out and said recently where they said they are not going to touch rates any higher, that's kind of scary because if they hold right now and the market is not because the idea is that they keep raising rates and then it'll intentionally yeah, they gotta drop it. Yeah, we would cause a a minor recession. That's what they want to see to to have a more healthy economy. That's kind of what we all want, whether we think we believe that or not. But it's not happening. And what I'm fearful of is that here we are coming into an election year coming up, and we're holding steady on interest rates, and the the actual housing market is still actually slightly climbing or even staying still, not dipping and driving. And then they go and like let's say Q one of next year, go let's drop it a half a point. Yeah, because of motivation with an election mm. years, we can't and let so anything tank. What will that do? That will drive yeah. all the investors, all the people that have the assets that have the cash to rush back into the market again, swoop up, swoop, them up. swoop up, which will then drive assets even further. And so this reverse market crash, they say it's already started, and it's just mm. destroying. The middle class. Well, what did the what did the W E F say? So you will investor. own nothing and be happy. I mean, it looks like they're moving in that yeah, direction. W-E-F. I mean, I for the first time, like we've talked about this over the last few years, right? We've kind of gone yeah. back and forth of what we think is going to happen or what's not. And I think I've I've jumped on both sides of oh, crash, no crash. Now I really am starting to believe that this is the most likely outcome. Is Dang. that we? Uh, and I've mentioned this a couple times already, right? That I'm starting to think that. We are just in an unprecedented time right now, and we'll 30 years from now talk about this period of time of Hmm. when, you know, the average person could still afford a home, and then that just got out of reach for the majority. It looks like we're moving that direction. Meanwhile, there are things that are happening that, like the car market, Hmm. which more likely resembles the bubble that we had in the housing market. Remember when I told you guys what they did in the car market this year? Yeah. How it was related to like the 08? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So that happened. And the same thing happened where there was tons of people buying and flipping cars. So it was a big hustle to buy, especially like a, a luxury car, that was high in demand because of all the chip issues and they couldn't do it. So there was a a huge subset of people were buying cars, okay, brand new. They would get them, not put any miles on them, sit on them for three to six months, flip them and sell them for 23 to 30. Because then the other car, they'd that run became, out. That yeah. became a legit, and you are now seeing, uh, and it's a dead giveaway when you see it, because you'll see a car that's a year, year and a half old, 500 miles on it. Yeah. Like they're they're all flooding into the market. I've been sending Doug these videos like crazy because I and know you're he's seeing. Been, what have, what have oh, dealerships like crazy, huh? done? How many videos have I sent you in just the last that? two days? Like four. Yeah, 
Wow. What'd of you say, of what'd all you, the breakdown mm-hmm. of all these vehicles. What'd you say, Justin? Oh, what have the dealerships done to, to sort of address this? You can't. I know, yeah. They're well, reducing. So for the first time, you can walk into a dealership now and get for sure whatever you want at MSRP, and some are even discounted. Oh, wow. So it's yeah. a good time to get a car. Yeah. Hmm. That, that's why I sent it to Doug, because I know Doug is kind of in the market right now, and I said, like, listen, you're going to get an opportunity to make a, a good offer on something hmm. that you want. Is this going to be your cool car, Doug? You're going to get that one, the car that you want? Uh, that's cool. the thought. <laughs> I'm uh, yeah. Cool car. Let's do it. All right. If well, I can, if I can push on them. A ninety three Miata. Yeah. <laughs> Those <laughs> were convertible. Amazing. Dog. It's yeah. convertible. Those were amazing. Those were great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, have you ever met a? You ever met a, a manly guy driving? One? I actually no. just. No. Hey, I actually just met a dude who told me that his, him and his son like race him. Oh, that would be fun. Uh, yeah, there's a, there's actually a category okay, yeah. that for So those. I was a valet, all right, okay. Oh, and, yeah. And uh, so you guys know, <laughs> what's the one, the Villa Montavo, or no, it's the Mount Winery. Yeah, yeah, yeah Right, yeah. right. So they do concerts there and everything, right? And so, That's where you were a valet at? I, yeah, I was there. I, I was there uh, one year, and then I was also, I did at the Villa Montavo as well. Uh, but it was just kind of comical because I didn't even know who was playing that night, but it was Miata after Miata after Miata after <laughs> Miata. And then it was like, you know, and it was a lot of ladies, a lot of ladies, a lot of ladies, a lot of like short haired ladies. Lot of, you know. And then I'm like, okay, what's that? And it was like, it was, it wasn't Lilith fair, but it was like, you know, it was like Melissa Etheridge or something. Oh, yeah, yeah, and yeah, like, yeah. I'm like, oh, but it was literally the whole parking lot was like Miata. So I was like, <laughs> Apparently this is a thing, you know, in this community. Wow. Yeah, this is the Miata Fest. You must have you've driven some some amazing cars then, right? I have, yeah. Like okay, I mean, well, my favorite. That's why I was always telling you guys, like, I love like Porsche nine elevens because you drove one. There. I drove one like a, like this is all the stuff you don't tell people, right? It's like your fears, like leaving your car with like like some young a asshole ballet. like me. Uh, and there was like this fire road, this hairpin turn on Vilmatavo where we would test every car to be able to see if, <laughs> you know, they could handle that sort of, you know, hairpin turn. And what like some of them of would shit. fishtail, some of them would like just, yeah. like just handle it and you were like gold. So yeah. Porsche so of the all the, of all the car videos and car analysis that I sent to Doug, so if you ever if you love a 911, this is going to be the year to buy one if you've ever Dang. won one. Because of all the car markets That's that, one of my that was inflated the most, it was the the turbo 911. That's one of my favorites. Yeah, yeah, the GTRS, right? That car because they still produce a decent amount of them when you compare them to like Ferrari and Lamborghini, they produ- and that car you could get 170 to 200 a, a turbo? Yeah, yeah. Oh, not a brand new one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, early, like just pre-COVID. But they were going for three, four hundred thousand oh, dollars. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. For yeah, like, yeah, it, obviously, inflated. you can add all the bells and whistles, yeah, and they can yeah, easily yeah. get up to two fifty yeah. or whatever like that. But yeah, no. In fact, I met a guy that had bought it for one one seventy six right before right before COVID hit. But those inflated like well over one fifty MSRP. And if you look right now on Car Gurus or whatever, you know, Auto Trader or whatever, there's tons of them, and they're like low mile, five hundred miles. Do you know, you know that I can put on my car? Uh, there's a valet function and it'll record oh, that's the smart. inside and outside yeah. of the car. So when you smart. drop your car off at me, I'll be like, you, mother- <laughs> <laughs> you turn that on is yeah. all I'm saying. I wonder how much. <laughs> turn that on because, you know, stuff happens. You see that in like <laughs> movies and stuff like that. Of course, like- bro. How old were you? Well, okay. Yeah. What were you? How old no, were you? I was yeah, in but that's college. like instant fire though, right? Bro, I was yeah, like you- 19 years old. Bro, you, you know? imagine being a 19 year old. Here's my 911. Go park this. You're not going to be like, mm. I mean, it bit. depended. I mean, it wasn't like an every time thing. It was like, oh my god! Yeah, but but the certain cars, you're like, Whoa. yeah, the expensive ones. You're gonna do that yeah. shit to the shitty cars. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we didn't take it on the freeway or nothing, or like outside the venue. Yeah, it was yeah. just like in there, in there, and we had like this one definitive road that we're like. Tch. Oh, get on it! Yeah. I would. I'd be nervous being a valet. You know I right? would too. I see. I would be nervous yeah, about like driving somebody's car. Like that. I worked with like one or two people that like crashed some cars. Oh, it was bad. Like really? Was, oh yeah. And it was. And it wasn't like they got any kind of top speed or anything. It was they were just backing it in and, and underneath. <sighs> It was at the Opera House in Las Vegas, and it was like the underneath parking structure. And there's all these like big cement pylons, and then just wham! And this is the first day. This this one poor girl, she she was working with us, and it was her first day. And and like she she got into somebody. She was a valet. Uh, Mercedes, yeah. This like don't say the sexist comment. I'm not gonna say. I just want to know what the <laughs> you were doing. Yeah. Bro, I wasn't. You I were so gonna say it. I can no, feel no, it. I'm just backing it up. I don't know what was happening. <laughs> 
<laughs> basically scratch it all the way up the side. Hey. Hey, that's <laughs> it was brutal. That'd be a funny video. Like a guy's gonna hand off his keys, and it's like the girl valet. He's like, uh, <laughs> can I give it to? Uh, can I, what do I do? <laughs> there was a guy that did smash. Yeah, so it was like both, but uh, that was br- that was our very first day. It yeah. was like, oh, we can't. Oh have that. man, that we can't be, have that. That would be awful. Now I imagine, like, in order to even have a valet service, like you got to be insured for th- stuff like that. I mean, yeah. that's got to be like a. Doesn't matter. I know. Bro. Still, no, the hassle. You smash your car. You fix it all you want. No. Like you- Did I ever tell you guys what happened? So when I when I first got the Camaro, right? So this is like what almost fifteen years ago, right? I was so excited. Right? It was a big deal for me to get that car and everything like that. And I and I hadn't driven it more than ten miles out the radius of my house. Never parked it anywhere and stuff. And my uncle, who works for the company, was just like, "You got to bring it over." He lived in Pleasanton, 20, 30 minutes away. All right, cool. I'll drive it over. So I drive over to come see him. Oh, we're all checking the car out, stuff like that. And I park it. Now, it, this they live in this really beautiful, nice neighborhood. So a really nice neighborhood, huge, wide streets. We used to play roller hockey in there with that. And so I park it on the street, and I come in, and I'm, I'm hanging out with them all day. End up having dinner with them. We're at dinner, and my niece is getting ready to go to a friend's house. The girl comes, lady comes to the house, knocks on the door. My niece gets in, and we leave, and stuff like that. And it's like two minutes later, the doorbell rings again. And she's like, is that your guys' car? Oh, no, your heart. Bro. She literally backed out of the driveway. This thing, uh, it was on the other side, parked, and just because it was black and it was <gasps> dark. You didn't, didn't tell see, me this? Yeah, dude. She just <sighs> freaked, bam, oh. right into my whole front fender, dude. Oh. And I just, I mean, I had it for You me. just bought it. I just bought it, dude. Oh. It's just, by the way, if people don't know, it's a 68 yeah, it's Super a, Sport. Yeah. This is a very collection. Yeah, it's that, that thing's, the rain has never even hit the paint job on that thing before. And so it's like, what'd you do? Did you walk out and just like, oh, bro, I was so devastated. I cried. I literally cried. <laughs> <laughs> I cried. Of course I you fucking did. Fucking admit, I cried, okay? That was like, because you know why? Because I wasn't yes, such I a, get it. it's my, my uncle's, you know, daughter's friend. Yeah. You know, you could tell she felt really bad. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It was an accident. And it's like, oh. but so that the emotions that I had, I was so angry. I was so uh, frustrated. <laughs> you had to let it out somehow. It was a terrible oh, place yeah. to be. Just, like, like, yeah. How do I react? Yeah. Just have to like, sob. Yeah, I'm driving with this massive dent on the way home crying. <laughs> Why? What are you doing? I'm never taking <laughs> this outside again. Why? I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry, Bertha. Especially at like that point in my oh, life, too, man. because that, w- not, that was a big accomplishment, a big deal for yeah, me. Yeah, it meant more and, than just the car. Yeah, yeah. So it had a lot wrapped into it. It wasn't just like, because if someone hit my car, I would be pissed. You know of what I'm course. saying? But I wouldn't be like, it's not the end of the world. No. Like we just, I told you guys, we, Katrina's car just got keyed. Like, yeah, really bad. Yeah, like, yeah. you know, I'm pissed. But that's it was sentimental. It's, it was a milestone for you. Yeah. It's a big yeah. deal. Did you, have you named your car, by the way? You named the Camaro? No. I, yeah, you have. No. You're laughing because you have. No, I have. No. Everybody my has. My mom does that to everything. So no, yeah, I don't. Wait, well, you always, well, hold on, that's weird. Really? No, I don't think I named. I don't think I, you know, I probably went through a I phase where I thought about. I you did, well, what I'm trying to think about is if I ever named any so of my Eleanor. other cars, but I, I don't think I, I don't think I ever as obsessed as I can be about the vehicles and stuff like that. Yeah. I, I don't yeah. think I ever named. I it's mean, kind I of a chick all thing. My guitars, though, naming though. your car yeah. is not a chick thing, bro. That's a guy thing. Really? They name their boats. They name their cars. If they, I had a boat, I would name my boat for sure. But I don't think it is it a guy thing. Is it a guy thing? To name yeah, cars? it's always a female name. Well, uh, yeah, I think so. Maybe. I mean, Justin names his guitars. I do. I name my guitars. Are all your yeah. guitars named? <laughs> Yeah, what's really? that one? What's the black one? So that's Veronica, and what's the and what's that's this Betty? Yeah. Those are good names. Wait, hold on, that's the comic book. I yeah, know. yeah, that's what's that called? Uh, Archie. 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 Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 cool. Yeah. And what's the ones at home? So then I have Jessica, which was before I what? met you. Okay, yeah. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Jessica. Katrina's, Katrina's the other one. <laughs> <laughs> this will get awkward real quick. <laughs> I'm like, dude, this is getting yeah, weird, yeah. dude. He goes home yeah, with like, my acoustic. Mm. Just, <laughs> Katrina, <laughs> Katrina. <laughs> you know, this got really uncomfortable really fast. <laughs> Doug, have you named any of your stuff? Do you name your swords? Yeah, yeah, I have not. One. Do you name anything? Uh, yeah. Well, sorry. No, <laughs> no, name- I have not actually named. Andrew, my you name? You ever name your car? No. Okay. Yeah. yeah I, I, I never. I never. People I never, that are car enthusiasts often will name their. I know both stuff for sure. Let's actually. You put, actually put a name on. Yeah, your yeah. Car. Right. That's like really common, right? right? Yeah. But yeah, no. Wasn't there? Wasn't there? What country was it? They putting out a new military ship and they had this big contest for the public and they said whoever, whatever name gets the most votes. Yeah, that was in Scotland. <laughs> yeah, so, Bodie, Bodie McBoat. Bodie McBoatface, yes. 
<laughs> that was their answer. They had to they, put that on the boat. I like boat name. Like boat names, like people have come up with like it really original, yeah, cool stuff. Yeah, so yeah. I think that that's actually pretty cool. And th I think there's something to that, right? Like I think there's something about having like the boat name so you can differentiate it from because there's so many boats that look a lot like white, all these white boats, mm. some similar models. And so having the actual name across it really differentiates. It's not like a car where you have rims and different paint like so many yeah. different paint colorways like it's like pretty standard right yeah, i don't know mm. I, I, what was that there was a horror movie from uh, stephen king where the car had a name mm. and Whoa. it was like a classic it was like a it yeah was, it was like a hot rod almost. dude it was you know that one traumatized the shit out of me when i was a kid exact do you guys, that was do you guys know some here I, okay i'm i'm going through uh elon musk's biography right now oh it's really good cool christine and christine, christine yes. Yes. that yes. movie Scared the shit out of me when I was a kid. I don't know if I've seen that. It one. Just, it's a car that's possessed I mean, it's by demons. Oh, I definitely super creepy. Yeah, I mean, and it, yeah, it, it kills is. people and stuff. So, any, any Stephen King movies. Do, do you know the the Elon Musk story and his supercar? No. Uh -uh. What do you mean uh, okay. his supercar? So, like Elon Musk, after he sold his very first company, he got like uh, I want to say twenty five million at once, and he's like like early twenties or whatever. Mm -hmm. That this was his first big team, and up until that point, like I mean, the guy was like sleeping at work, like he didn't have anything mature, and so he went and bought himself out a million dollar McLaren. Wow, that was like his first big purchase. And he fucking wrecked it with Peter Till, like straight rolled the motherfucker. Wow. wow. Yes. So the story goes that with, Peter with Till- With him in it? Yes. With him? Peter Till was in the car oh with him when they're God. driving, and he looked at him and said, what can this thing do? And he took- You know what I like about Elon? That sounds like Elon's, that I didn't even sure. know that. Elon's like a, he's a billionaire- See if you can find a picture of the car. He's a billionaire bro. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I feel like I hung out with him. You know what I mean? Like, you hear these stories, like- I could see us doing stupid shit like that. You know what I mean? We're you know you oh, buy yeah. oh oh shit, Adam. That's, Especially you, you if I was in my twenties. Let's see what this you, can do. Can you power slide this? Yeah, you know? yeah. yeah like no, we're, yeah. see if you can find the. <laughs> oh, is that it destroyed right there? Look at it. Oh wow! Oh. He just rolled it. Wow. Yeah, they 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 fucked it up. Hey, that that uh, South Park episode did a great little bit on oh, on yes. the billionaires. How they're like oh, yeah. fighting was over that, going that, that's it right there. Yeah, they're fighting. Yeah, I think so. Look at how look how bad that is. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man. That's crazy. Wow. Well, yeah, I'm glad, that, I mean, he didn't die. Yeah, him and Peter Thiel. Why well, we could have lost two of the like great minds, huh? And yeah. one fell swoop. I yeah. can't believe I had never I had never heard that story before. I thought that was really interesting. Yeah, you ever see a picture of you know Elon? Elon they, he used to be balding when he was younger, right? And now he's got a lot of hair. So I guess he put some uh, plugs. Yeah, he did the thing. Did the hair plug thing? Yeah. Somebody yeah. was just talking about somebody else that just that just did that. That was on a, a documentary. That oh the um, uh, Beckham. He so, got hair plugs? Oh, you think? Or whatever? Oh, that's I mean, oh, people that sure? have followed him forever are like, oh, didn't you see what he did? He obviously had hair. Have you seen what people hmm. look like after they get that done? Well, I mean, he's a great example. He has great hair right No, no, now. no. I mean, like, right after. Oh, oh no. Oh, so I know people, I've, I, I'm not going to say too much, but who, who <laughs> they went to Mexico <laughs> because it was cheaper. <laughs> it was good, though. It was all legit. Well, that's like the freckle tattoo, like, after well, they're done. I was like, oh, They do ee. a pretty good job, right? I guess you can't really tell. But, dude, the next day, bro, the, his head looked like, he looked like a legit mushroom. <laughs> like it's legit swole, it's oh swole. yeah bro it's a nasty procedure i mean I, it's crazy some Yikes. of these things right that we do like I, I think when girls get their lips done the next day is like crazy oh, dude God. you gotta hide for like a good 48 yeah. hours like, what happened stung by a whole hive of bees <laughs> what happened by the way it used to be white hair and bald was cool for guys remember that we, yeah. people used to do that on purpose to their hair bald Bald too. No. Yes. Whoa. Bald's never been yeah, cool. Bro. Bald's and been yes, it, it showed uh, wisdom. I mean, not since Vin, Di Vin Diesel and not, Bruce Willis made bald yeah. kind of cool. Other no, than no, that, I, it's never been cool. You look way well, back in as I shaved my head like all through my teens yeah, and then all the way yeah. up. Yeah. And then yeah. now it's like whatever. I never cared about, but I, I told you guys when I first started sharing my whole hair thing and then shaving my head, like the amount of D bro, I get I still this day I get DMs about that. I know. Like when we when really? I first started talking about it, it was a big I was surprised on how many people I mean it makes sense now. Like how big is that market, Doug? What's the hair loss market? Oh, it's got billions. It's huge. Is it billions? I'm sure. Yeah. Wow. It's got to be huge, dude. Yeah. If guys only knew, though, like, yeah, if you spend that much time and energy on just dudes. getting jacked and making money, you'd be way you're, better you're, off, bro. No, you're right. Yeah. You're, you're right. Like, I mean, make I, money and fit. Or be being fit. a better person. Self, like, you, yeah, self improvement. You got to go the good route. Yes, that's well, yeah, yeah. what I said. <laughs> Get jacked and money. <laughs> Get dollars. Get dollars, yeah. everybody. Adam's like, be a good man. Be a good person. All right. Why don't you work on that? Speaking of money, did you hear about the war? I'm going to pull this up between open ai and google that's happening right now Ooh, no so, oh i gotta pull this up so open ai is o over which one's gonna cause the well apocalypse? no think about i mean i don't know about you guys but i've trained myself to use open ai to answer a lot of my google questions 
because it's way more accurate. And I then I don't never have to use it. And then I don't have to go through a bunch of websites to search the material. Like, so next time you guys are thinking about just Google searching something, use that. Really? Use that. Yeah. And you'll get the answer versus having to find an article and then having to read the article or read three of them, decide that's the better article. I don't, I don't trust the machines. You know what I mean? <laughs> Remember this mm. when the machine up. I'm assuming that, that that's South what that's what the the argument is or what the, the well. So okay, I've always been nice to Siri. <laughs> yeah, right yeah, on purpose. Okay, so right now these artificial intelligence researchers are super high demand because AI technology is like exploding okay and every company is like trying to trying to get the best people for this but they're super high demand and they're low supply there's not a lot of them there's not a lot of them right so see so they're very very high demand so check this out open ai is in battle with google in, in a battle with google to lead the tech industry's artificial intelligence efforts they're going after these senior what do they call what do they call them oh, like senior the artificial engineers. intelligence researchers mm -hmm. you know how much they're offering them i bet to bring them over a million dollars i bet I bet over a million. Five to ten million dollars. Yeah, yeah. Whoa. Well, remember when you I thought it was you who five brought, to ten million. Wasn't it you who brought this up about the or somebody who we interviewed brought this up about the the difference between like a super engineer versus oh, like yeah, a, yeah, 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 yeah. And so like, the, like that's one what, one ex excellent engineer will do more. You'll work save than money, 50. yeah, if you Right. If so you're able it's to worth to pay a guy or a girl a million dollars a year. Well, uh, that's a super engineer because they'll do the work of like ten or a yeah. hundred. Well, for something, something like this, like was. if you want to, you want to, like you're in this battle because yeah, whoever owns is going to be. Gonna it was. It was a crazy number like that. Yeah. So they're fighting over a few people, and they're rich, right? OpenAI and Google obviously have a lot of money. Yeah. So you got very wealthy companies, high demand for what you do, and you're not, and you're one of the so, few people that does it. You're going to make a lot of money. Doug, I might need you to look this up because it's um, there's this like offshore kind of boat that is storing all of these um, units for basically being able to deploy like AI units and everything. And it's, it's like government uh, uh, funded and it's like, it, it basically has like cloaking device can camouflage itself. Like it's all to be able to prepare. So we have like this, this offshore way of like deploying these things. Wait, 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 why would we need to I have deploy? no idea you need to fight like bad AI with good AI? Yeah, basically. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, so it's like an emergency, it's some kind of emergency step that they just signed off on. That's like it has. It, you have to pull it up so I can get so some more details. This is a but it's a government-run like AI center. You know, like almost like it's like what, what do you call those like storage for for all of like uh, oh, for streaming all the, services and all that. Like that they have like clouds. Like this, yeah, the cloud. It's like it's basically like that, but for like AI. Wow. Interesting. Yeah. Wow. I was like, what are they, we going to use this for? It's going like, to get weird. I don't know if that's literally Skynet or if it's like really trying to help. It us. is going to get real. I know that we were joking the other day about the um, South Park episode, yeah. but there's, I mean, there's a lot of, <laughs> there's, there's a lot of truth to that possibility. I mean, that the, the, the way the AI is getting as far as what it, what it can create. And it, it's just here too. It's just yeah. getting, you know what it's getting, getting, well, a lot of people are dismissing it. Cause it's just like chat. Like it's, it's social right now. Like they're just basically like, like scouring the internet for like all the data points and everything. And it's, it's, it's based off of what we already know, but you know, once it turns the corner and starts doing things and learning on its own, it's a whole different thing. The problem, <laughs> the challenge is that, um, that people are they're 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 convinced that their problems would go away if they had all the money and food or products that they could get yeah, and yeah. if they didn't have to work to get it because that's the promise right the promise is a few people will own this power this power will provide everything for everybody there's no jobs that's okay because we're going to give you guys yeah. you know UBI money or whatever and so people are like, well, that's going to be a great life. And that's psychological torture Dude, for people. It, I think yeah. it is so naive to think that. I've, you heard me on the multiple times talk about like for some- That's going to mess with people. We psych think we, for some reason, we have positioned it in our society that to have privilege, to have all the money, to have all the options of that is such a better place to be. Mm. Like that we've positioned it that way. And I, I think in our lifetime, we will see, we will get to a place where most everybody can have everything. For sure, all their needs met, and it's some. Be hard, it's and be I think hard we will we will have more depression. Yes. We'll have more suicide. We'll have more anxiety. More addiction. More addiction. Yeah. We'll have more of all this bad shit that we. It's that's not the answer. We are we are literally wired to be challenged and to do things that have deep meaning. And if we don't have those things, we're in big trouble. It reminds me of the advice you got from Arthur Brooks about uh, 
you know, instead of just giving money to a uh, homeless person, a homeless person. Thank you. Yeah, you were gonna say. I mom. know. I was gonna say that. <laughs> I was, I'm better. I paused. I paused for the assist. I, oh. I paused for the assist. Come on, guy. <laughs> Gotta give me some credit for that. <laughs> Hobo. <laughs> Speaking of bums, like, <laughs> do, you, do, you guys, do you guys see that? Uh, you know, so it's Xi Jinping and and all these diplomats we, are over here, right? Because. Uh, Gavin Newsom cleaned everything miraculously. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, I guess like a foreign uh, reporting um, group, like that, that were there kind of filming. Oh, I saw this. Yeah. So they got they, robbed. They got robbed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a news, so we shouldn't laugh. A news company yeah. from, uh, I forgot where, it, it, it might have been um, one of the Netherlands. It might be one of the Eastern, I don't know. But anyway, they showed up to do like media report yeah. and they got, they they got, got held robbed. up and basically had to give them all of their like recording yeah. equipment. We're wow. here to we're here to report on the safety of San Francisco. What? What do you want? What? Oh, oh, fuck, oh here, here, here you can Take have my camera. Wow. I know. Wow, <laughs> How embarrassing dude. for us. Wow. Dude, it's such a shit show. Yeah. You guys, but, hey, fin finishing that thought with the homeless oh, person, yeah. that's the reason why Arthur Brooks would say to you that, you know, to ask, them to pray ask, for you. ask for them to do something for you, right? To give them purpose. Yes. To somebody who doesn't obviously have that in their life right now and they're and they're suffering and they're You like, know, I've done that too a few times. I've done that a few times where I'll give them some money. And then I'll say, hey, could you pray for my son or could you pray for my daughter or whatever? And the look on their face is always, I mean, it, it tells you a lot. And yeah. they're like very much like, oh, yes, I could do that for you. I bet you have no idea what the trickle effect that is too. I, I bet, I mean, who knows what ends up happening to that person after or something like that to give them hope that, mm -hmm. oh, I can provide something for something somebody. Something of value. That's right. Otherwise you feel lost. Yeah. I and know. I just think that, boy, we think that we want all these answers. It's just like too, like, and you, we have so many examples and stories of this where somebody does a New York Times bestseller, gets a windfall of money, wins the lottery, and they're more depressed or celebrities. Look at they, celebrities. They get all the stuff they want and then they're more they're they're worse off than what they were before. Like there's something to be said about that. Yeah. There's something to be said about actually the the fact that you can't get everything or that you have to work towards these things well, there's, and there's, that journey towards that. Well so um you know there's spiritual truth uh that you'll see that spans across religions. So whether you're Christian, Jewish, Islamic, Buddhist, um, you know, Sikh, whatever, it, that the major world religions, you'll oftentimes see <clears throat> messages that are the similar or the same across all of them. And what the religious leaders would say is that that's spiritual truth. So although we may disagree on who God is and, you know, some of the other details, the fact that we all agree that this thing here is yeah. important shows that we've all identified like some serious spiritual truth. Well, one of those things is, is the message of detachment. Uh, or in, in, you know, in Christianity, they're called the Beatitudes, right? Where, you know, if you don't, if you're not careful, you will worship earthly things. You will worship money, power, honor, or pleasure. And those, because you're trying to fill a spiritual hole, and this is what all these religions would say in one way or another, because you're trying to fill a spiritual hole with something that is not, in their case, what they would say is God, that you will be frustrated and you'll want need more because it's not working and you create these addictive patterns and anxiety and depression around those things. Yeah. Um, so, and by the way, uh, take it back to fitness. So this doesn't sound like I'm <laughs> all of a sudden leading a cult or something. Um, bringing it back to fitness. What we say all the time that we learned is if you fall in love with and worship the results of your workouts of looking good, of getting strong, of burning body fat or whatever, <laughs> if you fall in love with that, it will be very hard for you to maintain a healthy relationship with exercise for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. You cannot fall in love with the results. You have to fall in love with the process. You recognize it's good, but also too, you have to include all the other goods. You yep. know? So all the other things that uh, are necessary to um, you know, take you through that journey and that process. Right. It's crazy how much it parallels what we're yeah. talking about with real life. A hundred percent. So if so. here you are, you're in this new world where they give you everything. There's no, you don't have any challenge. There's really no meaning in what you're doing. And now you get everything you want. You're going to figure out real hard, real quick that, oh, shit, this is not well, what I thought. I heard, I don't know how, if I can articulate this well, but like Jonathan Peja was talking about like, you know, Adam and Eve and like how, uh, you know, the the fruit, like where they're, they're grabbing that the apple of the knowledge, right? Mm. And really it was, it wasn't the fact that uh, God wasn't going to give them, uh, you know, it, the fruit. It was the fact that they went to grab it for themselves, mm. right? So like now I'm, I'm creating, this is my higher good. And so oh. now I'm basically worshiping this, and this is where like all of the problems and sin kind of arose. Whoa, yeah. that's good stuff. Yeah. All right, you guys want to hear something uh, that I thought was an urban legend but turned out to be true? 
Have you guys ever heard this urban legend mm. that if you're in a pool with the drain, you know, the drain sucks water. Yeah. That if you like, if careful, don't put your butt up to it because it could suck out your insides. Or somebody <laughs> did that. There was a story. There was oh, a story yeah. that some kid was in a pool. I heard this a long time ago. You guys apparently didn't. <laughs> put his ass on, on, on one of those drains. So I heard the thing. opposite. Hey, this really sounds it like sucked. your mom coming I out thought seeing you fucking the around with the drain side. as a kid. <laughs> and she tells you no. this story. Hey, That's really what it's hey you better get your South, ass Sal, quit messing with the drain hole. <laughs> <laughs> put your pants hey. back on. <laughs> Never, yeah. mom. Hey, listen. <laughs> I just read. Listen, I read. I'll tell you this story, Sal. <laughs> I wouldn't be here, dude, if I did that. Because it actually is true. This <laughs> happened to somebody. You'll suck your butthole out. Sucked it right It sucked their freaking, their, their, like, intestines. Intestines and colon out. Oh. Yeah, dude. That's real? Yes. Yes. I mean, it, it makes sense physics-wise. I mean, that amount of pressure pulling out of, oh. a, of the, the, the <laughs> weight volume of that well, that water pulling out of a tiny little hole like oh. this, like, oh. and then the suction that creates. Oh, man. Yeah. What it was did just you one read? of those where moments. Did you, where did you read about that? Well, you ever read something that disturbs you so much? Like, I need to share this. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Sal. So we feel the Sorry, same. everybody. <laughs> Not just everybody listening to the podcast. That's like, right now. that's like when I brought up bot flies on here, and I just remember oh. seeing all the comments like, oh, you ruined my whole oh, commute. Yeah, just we just, just, you just ruined everybody's commute. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Right. We're supposed to do an Organifi commercial. Oh, so hey. We're going to hey. be so mad. It's hey, like, great. I just lost like half the audience right Hold on. I want to hear you say- this, the, the For flavor. all you remaining, <laughs> what's the flavor? Uh, pumpkin spice. Oh, you said it yeah. on purpose, bro. <laughs> I knew you tried to set me up. You bro. said it on purpose now. Yeah, dude, make fun of my lisp. Like you always that, say dude. with an N. Yeah, pumpkin. It's, 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 pumpkin sounds cuter. Uh, just, no, they got yeah, the pumpkin. Dyslexic. Pumpkin. They've got no. Sh that, now it made me feel bad. <laughs> they got pumpkin spice. Uh, their gold juice. And you it's know, delicious. Yes, they. You know what's cool? What they do? I actually didn't know this. I was on their website, like checking up to see what new products they have. Um, they actually have a section that you can uh, search supplements based off a goal. So I sent oh. Doug a screenshot of like all, there's oh, quite smart. a few different categories. Also, oh, you go like, like uh, muscle gain, fat loss, yes. health. Oh, yeah. And then, cool. it, it, and then it categorizes all the supplements that support. Oh, look at that. Yeah. See, that's, sleep, that's recovery, smart. mood, okay. stress, weight management, mm -hmm. metabolism. Look at woman's wellness, energy performance, brain health, clarity. That's smart. Isn't that cool? What if what if every category had all the stuff? <laughs> <laughs> Strange. That would They're be all there. That would be dirty. That'd be a dirty. Fits hack. in all the categories. Yeah, that's yeah. if you sell one supplement. Yeah. Click on the category. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Oh no, that's cool. Look at that. Yeah. And then they have and stacks. They, and and they, stuff. yeah, they stack and bundle some of them. So I thought that was pretty neat. Oh yeah, good oh, stuff. They they they're, they're, they do a good job. Where does Sheila Jeet yeah, fit yeah. in all that? Huh? Yeah. Sheila Jeet would be, be like in, the wellness. Do they have a vitality section, mm -hmm. Doug? Scroll back again. What, Energy the and performance. Or uh, mood and stress. Maybe. Um, oh, mood yeah, and stress, maybe? maybe? Stress. Uh, mood and stress would be a good, that's a good good guess. Let's see. They may not have it up yet. Oh, oh it might not be up yet. Oh, they, okay. oh, we sold them out. We it. <laughs> we yep. sold, I saw it on the front when you first log in. Wow. Cool. Hey, uh, did we talk? Oh, I didn't know they have uh, essential magnesium. Yeah, they do. I didn't know they, that. They have a lot of products. We don't talk about. Like yeah. half their products. They have so many. Yeah, I did like five. <laughs> it's so bad. Well, it's because we only we only talk about what we use. I know. Uh, I well, try, yeah. But I mean, I would try. actually, I, I would have that. Even though I, I take my magnesium through Mellow, I do. There are times where I wish I had a pill form. Oh, I see. Yeah, there it's are times. There are times when like I forget, and then I I I'm trying to shut. Like you guys have yeah. heard me talk about shutting my water off. Yeah. Like right, if I keep drinking too late, I get up in the bathroom. <laughs> and so the one thing I don't like about that is if I forgot to take my mellow a little bit earlier, then I'm like right before bed, I'm drinking a whole thing of water and that doesn't obviously help. Is that, I know you say you have a small bladder. Is that a real thing that some people have a small bladder or is that just what you, I know you do pee a lot, but you've always been this way, by the way. It's but actually, you know, it runs in the family, right? You, I know. That's what I was asking. You, yeah. So I wonder if that's a real thing. <laughs> have you, like, I don't, I don't know if it, I don't know if there's a direct <laughs> correlation to like a small bladder. You know, that's what I say. That's, I have no idea if like, I mean, like, it could be, I, it sounds like that could be a thing for sure. Yeah. Cause if you developed this as you got older, then I'd be like, well, you probably should get it. Right. Now I know it's genetic. Like I said, because literally me, my uncle, my two cousins, like we all are exactly the same. It's that the is, funniest thing too. When we all go to like to a restaurant together, like no one's ever sitting down the table. There's always one guy up. <laughs> one guy yeah. It's like a, the funniest thing rotating. you've ever seen. Like oh, if, no. if my uncle too cut, what is it? Un anatomically, it's highly unlikely anyone has a small bladder. Yeah. See, I don't. I don't. So you know what it might be? <laughs> <laughs> you might not produce enough Fake of the news. hormone that makes you uh, aldosterone. Is that it, Doug? Look it up. That makes you withhold fluid when you <clears throat> sleep. Your body will, redu will release it. And then so for some people, they might not produce it. And so they have to get up and pee. Is it aldosterone? Yeah, you got it. Oh, my God. Uh, well, why can't on. I remember oh my anything Actually, my wife? Listen, no, no, why, no, can't no. My, why does my wife tell me to do something 
And I forget right away. Yes. But then I remembered that. So I, I may be wrong here. So a hormone, your adrenal glands release that helps regulate blood pressure by managing the levels of sodium and potassium in your blood. I don't yeah. know if that has hmm. anything to do with uh, urine. So Yes, it does. It I had someone make you I, pee. So I had someone tell me that if I add salt to, the, to the water, it should help me not having to go pee as much yep, too. It should. So I haven't been good enough. I wonder what, I don't know how. I, so like your last glass of water, yeah. I would, I would. Do salty. I know with the mellow though. I wonder if that would taste good. Maybe if I did the the, the flavorless. So what? Just take it. Oh, I know you're like. Uh, you know me. <laughs> I like the, it has to taste good. <laughs> it good too. But I mean, that, I didn't even know. That, I didn't even know that Organifi had those those pills. Yeah. I would I would have both because yeah. I prefer mellow. But if there there's been times where I'm like, damn it, I don't yeah. want to drink. And they the whole go well thing. together. Sodium magnesium go well together. Okay. Yeah, they both help each other okay. out. So that would be good. Got it. And speaking of salt, have you ever heard of halo therapy? No, but I heard you talking about it. Like, yeah. So what? This has to do with salt mines. Yeah, when you when you go in, I'll pull it up. So I've heard about this before um, because who was it? Um, who was our president? World War II. He had polio. Roosevelt. Thank you. He had. He would go to these. He was super into exercise. He was trying to cure himself through fitness and nutrition. And he would go to these like wellness places that existed back then, which are kind of cool. Hmm. And a lot of them would have you go in these salt mines to breathe in the air. That's in them, and it's it's actually legit. So is that okay? So now on the woo woo side of things, that that whole category of people have those salt lamps and lights and yeah. all, all the time. So yeah. that's probably where the the benefit I is probably less to do with the aura and spirits and ions that are going on, <laughs> and more so ions are real. Ions. <laughs> <laughs> there was stuff I don't know about <laughs> neutrons and all that. Yeah, those are real too. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Molecules, you know, the, All your the, magical <laughs> molecule yeah. stuff. No, it says here. So when you breathe in the air, that's got tiny salt particles. It tends to help people with lung problems like asthma, bronchitis, and coughs. It also can help people feel relaxed, so it has a, an effect on people like that, and helps with skin conditions and allergies. So is this all in the same category too as somebody who does salt baths? Oh, that's a good oh, question. Yeah. I mean, you're not so bringing it, breathing salts? it in, but I know that that has a different effect. Hmm. Yeah, on the body. Um, but isn't that interesting? So yeah. it came from, it's a tw in the 12th century, the practice of visiting salt caves for therapeutic reasons was, was common in Eastern Europe. Tuberculosis part of that? Because I know like being in sun, right, in, in, in dry areas was, uh, I guess, like something that um, people that were suffering from that kind of like found their way towards. Oh, I don't know about that. Okay. Yeah, I had no, no idea. Oh, there is, there is a wet salt therapy. It involves bathing in salty water containing minerals. And then gargling with. Did you see the study on gargling with salt water in COVID? Did uh, you guys see this that just came out? No, no but <clears throat> I've had Google somebody salt mention. water gargle COVID study. I'm, no, I, I, I heard that actually the whole like rinse, like sinus rinse, and then also with the mouth rinse significantly like reduced. Yeah, well, I mean that makes sense because that's where impact. like you would inhale. Do you remember people like, saying that and getting kicked off social media yes. and told that they were? Uh, this is the annoying. Yeah, with your misinformation bullshit. It that actually you're throwing on every video reduced infection and then reduced the severity when people did have it. New study: gargling with salt water may help prevent COVID hospitalization. Wow! They were telling you Could not you to imagine do this. if that came out. Could you imagine if that just that so article right there, just that with that title? <laughs> oh, oh man, yeah, that's what's frustrating, man, and that's where it's like, oh, we want to have no, it's like more, it's the more government frustrating the people that still haven't woken up to it. Oh, dude. that's the part. I, I feel bad, dude. I can't, dude. I feel I bad for them. I can't. I, like, I cannot help somebody who still is like, <sighs> like actually believes. That we just now figured this out. I know. <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, yeah. That there wasn't Did you already guys people see this? Like, talking yeah, about all beginning. this stuff, and we need and we needed all that time yeah. to flesh out all the stuff. So now we now it makes sense. That's like, dude, you guys know, are man. Jesus. Just dismissing yeah. all valid treatments, you know, that were like everywhere else in the world. But you know, for some reason doesn't work here. I saw a couple articles that are happening because holiday season's coming up, and it's like literally, there's articles. And now I I hope nobody's taking these seriously, but it's, they say things like. Uh, Thanksgiving's coming up. Should you wear a mask? Or how to get your family that won't wear a mask to put one on when they come visit you during the Christmas holiday or something like that? <laughs> come on, dude. I mean, it's popped up. I mean, it's, uh, you know, I know that already that there's definitely uh, more cases recently because I can see already with the, the behaviors around people. Of course. I've seen more masks in the last like couple of weeks yeah. than I had seen in, in probably the last three months before that. Yeah. So obviously, it's uh, fine. We know who we're working with. Yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> Who's our shout out yeah. for today? Do we got one? Uh, are we? Where? Uh, how about the trainer things? Too? Oh yeah. Let's like, keep talking about. Or that. I, here about this. I'll give you this. I'll give you a real shout out, and then still plug the trainer thing. Uh, Elon's book. I'm, I'm like, I don't oh, know. Yeah. A third. What's it called? 
It's just his biography. The author is, um, let me give it to you right now. Uh, it's the newest one. It's the one with his his big old head on the front of it. And <laughs> <laughs> it's, it sounded bad. I didn't mean it like that. Uh, the How author, would you mean it otherwise? The, the author is uh, uh, Walter, Walter Isaacson. <laughs> So it's just, it's literally Elon Musk. That's yeah, the name of it. And cool. it's, it's the author is Walter Isaacson. He grew up kind of rough too, right? Yeah. A lot of fights. Yeah. Uh, um, I mean, his, his dad eventually had a decent amount of money, but they grew up in a rough area mm -hmm. and it, it had a kind of an unconventional uh, way of like raising him. Like I remember he got his ass kicked one time at school and his, his dad was like, yeah, you, you deserve that. You called the kid stupid. Mm. So, uh, I mean, it, it, they, it's, it's a pretty interesting. Like, there are a lot of things I didn't know. I mean, I shared one of the stories already I didn't know about him going through it. So awesome. It's good. And then the other thing is that, you know, I'm doing a three-part Train the Trainer series that you can sign up for. It's free. It'll be virtual, and it'll be live. You go to mindpumptrainer.com, register, and it's happening. When is it? January 15th is the first day, right? Correct. And it's the next two days after that. So it's 15, 16, 17. So get yourself signed get up. Get on it. Joy Mode is a product that uses real ingredients that actually have been proven to work to boost blood flow all over the body, including in those important areas uh, during those intimate times. So Joy Mode actually works. The data shows it. Go check them out. Go to joy, go to usejoymode.com forward slash mind pump. Use the code mind pump. Get 20% off your order. All right, back to the show. First question, the Ben Melton are your programs designed to have the same weight throughout all sets, or do you adjust it so it's as heavy as possible for each set in that rep range? Oh, I'm glad somebody, one of you picked this. Yeah, Who picked I this? picked that one. Yeah. Yes. I didn't realize that we needed to Common address this question. until we got a couple people yeah. on live callers that uh, were mentioning that they're like, yeah, I'm not getting any stronger. I'm doing the same yeah. weight through the whole program. I'm like, oh, no, you're a lot no stronger. No wonder, yeah. <laughs> no, the, ga the, the, the goal is to stay within the rep range that we provide you with the intensity that we yeah. tell you to work with. So for most of our programs, you're going to try to stop your sets about two reps short of failure. So whatever weight with perfect form that you could do with that will let you allow you to hit that rep range that we have in the phase that is within that intensity. That's it. So right. if you do a hundred, don't limit yourself. Right. So if it says, you know, if it says 10 to 12 reps and you pick a hundred pounds and you get to 15, well then you got to have to add weight. Or if you put a hundred pounds, you get down, you only get to eight. Well, now you have to make it a little lighter. And, and keep in mind that this also can fluctuate based off of your week. Like let's say, yeah, you yeah, know, last exercise. week you did 10 reps of 185 on squats, uh, but you had a rough week, a lot of stress, didn't get enough calories in, didn't get good sleep. And then you come into the gym and you put that 185 on and you can't get more than eight reps. It doesn't mean that you stick to that 185 right. just because so, and this is, by the way, this is why we, in our programs, we don't have like, do 20% of your max rep and we have these formulas that are like yeah. you know, precisely you yeah. should choose this weight because you 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 need to learn to adjust your weights based off how you feel and we try and well, teach people like how to feel what two short two reps short of failure should feel like and then you need to learn to adjust the weight accordingly. We do have a, and I know like most of the programs we should have it up if not like there's a downloadable way to be able to actually track it and write down the weights that you used for each one of these exercises. And it would be a valid practice to go through that just to kind of see where you're at instead of just going with what's comfortable right away. Like you, you, you set an intention on, I'm going to try and challenge myself and go five pounds more, a little 10 pounds more yeah. this time. And then, you know, press and see where you end up with that. And then once you kind of like see how that all works and you start being able to feel the way your body's going to respond before you get to there or, uh, like, you know, your stress levels, all that kind of stuff as you factor in, uh, that's going to help you adjust the weights more accurately. But I will say this, if you actually can go through MAPS Anabolic and keep the same weight that you did in, in phase the one. same reps each time. And, and, do, and, and hit and, the reps and, that we say. Yeah, and then hit the reps that we say you're in phase stronger. two. Phase three, you're getting much stronger. Yeah, and that yeah. would be- It goes from one to five to six to eight to 12, you know. That yeah. would be impressive, yeah. really impressive. So you're if you did that, by accident, because you just thought you were supposed to, uh, that's a huge win. I, most people, yeah. by the time they get to phase two, they have to reduce the weight a bit, say 20 to 30%. And then when they get to phase three, they have to reduce the weight another 20 mm -hmm. to 30%. That's pretty normal. And that's really good still. 
So if you're at all able to maintain yeah. the same weight as you increase reps, you are getting significantly stronger. It's like when your birth. friend tricks you and puts kilograms on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're like, oh, wow. <laughs> I did a lot more. Next question is from Graceful Telekinesis. What do you think about doing only concentric, concentric exercises for a month or two? What kinds of results, either negative or positive, would come from only doing this for a phase? Okay, so concentric is referring to the part of the rep where you're lifting the weight. Eccentric would be when you lower it, and then isometric means it's, it's steady. You're just holding it. So the question is, what if I just did the lift part, right? What if I didn't do the controlled lowering part and I just lifted the weight? Well, what would happen is a lot less muscle damage, um, much faster recovery, Olympic, and you would probably- Olympic prob lifting, basically. Yeah, and you would need to adjust your programming accordingly because- the eccentric sends a loud muscle building signal, but also causes the most damage. So if you're only doing positive or concentric reps, you're probably going to have to bump the volume and the frequency to equal the same kind of, I guess, stimulus. Now, that being said, just working on the concentric can make you explosive. It's got some athletic potential. I think for a month or two is totally fine. I don't think anybody should always train in one you know, type of contraction. But I think for a month of doing this, you'll probably learn how to be quite explosive. It would be my guess. Yeah, I mean, I, I mm -hmm. think the positives is, I think, I mean, this is what makes training fun and interesting is to play with variables like this. Like, hey, you know, I'm going to go all concentric training for a month or two and see what kind of benefits I get from it. Uh, staying like that for a long period of time, not good. Uh, the studies all show that the eccentric portion of the exercise uh, does the most damage, builds the most muscle. So if you're looking for hypertrophy, it would be not in your best interest to probably do that for a long period mm -hmm. of time. So I wouldn't neglect that. Um, that's really the only the only mm -hmm. negatives that I see from it. But as far as like you messing with this for a little bit, I think well, there's your nothing acceleration wrong with it. potential, right? In, in that that snap that uh, a lot of athletes are trying to get, you know, being in that focus of just mm -hmm. the concentric portion of each uh, exercise of movement. Very valid, you know, very uh, much of a, a, a method that I've used before with athletes. But yeah, it you also have to then, you know, realize that like the eccentric part, that's, you know, you have to be able to decelerate yeah. then too. Now we got to bring it under control. So, um, you know, there's that's one component. It's great to hyper focus on that, but uh, you know, there's a there's a shelf to that. Yeah, totally. I mean, a sled would be good for something like this. Uh, not just for lower body, but you could also yeah. do sled it's pulls, sled presses. The easiest way to do it. Yeah, that would be a really easy way. And Olympic lifts, obviously, are or like a medicine ball too. Is yep. a good way to do mm -hmm. it. Next question is from Fulvio Castle. How can I increase healthy fat intake without adding too many calories to my diet? Well. If you add healthy fats, you're going to add calories. But if you switch out the fats that you're eating for better fats or healthier fats, or switch it from carbs, then you're or or yeah, or cut the calories out from carbohydrates, then you're you're doing great. So some some people, a lot of people, benefit from uh, you know, especially people who are listening, right? People, if, if the typical listener likes to eat a lot of protein, whole food diet, might eat a lot of red meat. You know, switching out some of that red meat for fatty fish um, oftentimes has some inflammatory benefits uh, for some people. I, You know, whenever I've had a client who I've assessed their diet and they're under consuming fat, I've never had to take the calories from somewhere else and then give it to them in fat. I've always been able Just to bump, bump the healthy yeah. fat and the body actually positively responds. Yeah. Hmm. So if their goal was yeah, to- Yeah, because now it's healthy. Th exactly. So I, I I don't know if I I don't know enough about this to to for sure be about what I'm mm -hmm. saying, but more often if you think that you're under eating healthy fats because either we told you a nutritionist told you or someone you've pieced it together and figured out oh wow I'm under eating fats and you're concerned about going over your calories by adding healthy fats in the diet I wouldn't be to be honest yeah I would actually it see more satiated well it's, it's not just natural. that because you're 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 malnutrition you're yeah, not if you're yeah. if you're not getting enough healthy fat and I've seen this many times with like small thin female clients of mine that were eating 25 grams 30 grams of fat all day and we're not seeing any we're not getting any leaner we're not getting any stronger yeah. they're like they don't feel good and I all I do is go like oh, I want an avocado in there and some salmon or, or like some steak in there. And I and I, I don't care that our calories yeah. went up three, 400 calories. Yeah. They get well, leaner, they get stronger. They do it right away. Well, yeah. here's the comparison, right? You have a, because fats are essential. Okay, so you, you have to consume fats. Otherwise your body literally fails to thrive. And in extreme cases, you'll die, right? So 
You're not eating enough fat. That means your hormone profile is not where it should be. It means your metabolic <clears throat> system is dysfunctional. It literally means that you're putting yourself in a position where you're not going to be able to adapt to exercise as well, to food intake as well. Your body's probably in a stress state, so it'll probably want to hold on to body fat. Probably will slow down your metabolism, right? Yeah. So now you increase your calories by increasing fats, but now you're getting the adequate fat that you need. Yes, you're eating more calories, but now because you're healthy, the metabolic rate changes, hormones change, and things work better. So you don't gain weight from the extra calories. If anything, you get a little leaner. That's been my experience. Right. Again, same, we, don't, I've had the same we don't know everything for this person, um, but I normally would do that first yeah. before I'm like trying to take away from something else because I'm worried that taking them from 2,200 calories to 2,500 or say 1,600 calories to 18 or 1,900 calories is good. Cause that's not going to get you fat overnight, by no. the way, like literally bumping your healthy fats a little bit in your diet. Cause you're under eating them. The extra 300 to 400 calories is not going to make you fat and definitely not going to make you fat overnight. And most often than not, I want to see what just doing that does for the body. Next question is from Eck Betts sauna versus walking. Sauna gets my heart rate higher in 20 minutes than a 20 minute walk. Yeah, you could have you could smoke crystal meth. Your, your heart rate is too. <laughs> it's, it's yeah, the heart rate going up or down it doesn't, uh, doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter. So, okay, the, the question I guess I think the question they're asking is, this is like, really like a calorie burn. Thing? Is there health? Like, what are the health differences? Maybe because they both so, get different health. They're both good for you, but walking is going to give you more yeah, there's physical more adaptations, benefits. more stamina, yeah. more strength, digestion. Like, yeah. There's all kinds of uh, excess yeah. of benefits yeah. to walking. I got a, I got a hack for you. Walking circles say. in the sauna. Yeah. 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 Well, <laughs> yeah there's <laughs> a hack. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, look, in place. Look, they've called sauna. Some people have said that sauna sends a almost low level exercise signal to the body. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, and that's uh, so and that's exercise true. mimicking signal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That and that's that's true, but yeah. you're not you can't you're not going to get from the sauna uh, what you get uh, from exercise. Well, and a lot of that is the amount of calories that your body has to use to try and regulate your temperature, right? Yeah. I mean, you you increase your core temperature significantly. That sends a signal to the body like, "Oh shit, we're overheating." So the body's going to do what it needs to do to cool down. That takes energy to do that so that's where they get that well oh, this is like simulating a workout or somewhat there's that there's a heat shock proteins that are produced there's a vasodilation that happens and, and strengthening the heart yeah. uh through the process there's, it's really good for the vascular benefit, system yeah the vascular system benefits yeah a lot. sauna use seems to have really really interesting effects in, in a per, effects in a perfect world though I, this wouldn't be an either or for me this would be a, both a, yeah both like i yeah, mean totally. if you let's say you let's say you've dedicated 20 minutes every day that you've disciplined yourself to always walk and you also have access to a sauna i mean uh three to four of those days i'm gonna walk and then two to three days maybe i'm gonna get in the sauna like yeah. i mean i why not why not alternate those if you if if you only have that time and you could do either or then i think there's value mm -hmm. in in doing both of them yeah by the way there's a there's, have you guys ever tried this for a really sore muscle you put really really hot water on it and then you go really cold water and you alternate back and forth you guys ever try this mm -hmm. it works so we were talking about the sauna you know vasodilating opening blood vessels cold does the opposite it constricts so and so, so the gonna back and forth you're pumping pool, out pulls a bunch uh, of blood yeah uh, yeah you're and you're pumping you're out waste products it out yeah like it it'd be yeah. interesting to see that what, what a fun study i don't know if there's a study on it well it would be a fun it. study would be to compare that to somebody who's like doing like body weight exercise oh, or be way better. or mobility yeah. through because you're going to get the same type that's got to be way better yeah, so you okay. of course yeah Look, if you love the show, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out all of our free fitness guides. We have a lot of them. They're all free. You can also find us on Instagram. Justin is at mindpumpjustin. I'm at mindpumpdestefano. And Adam is at mindpumpadam.